at the MGM Grand Conference Center is tested, thus why we have the change to our bout sheet tonight, because a member of the team of Mick LePierre tested positive, and today, day of the fight, that main event against Jose Pedraza was scratched. Report that will be back July 14th. So back-to-back -back four rounders before we get to our new main event. We start it with Jose Martinez against Fabian Gonzalez. Jose Martinez, Trey, interesting. You talk, you know, we've been talking Father's Day and the father-son trainer fighter combinations. He has his dad, Alex, as his assistant. He's mic'd up in the corner, but he told us it was his mom who used to shadow box for fun with him and call out combinations. He had to throw. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like my wife. You, you think that I was the tough one in the house that would push my kids to fight or play football, and that's actually my wife. I'm the cautious one, and she's like, babe, just let them play. See Gonzalez and his See, right away. ability to switch stances. I got you. Yes, I was just about to say that. <laughs> his ability to switch stances. I think he fights better from this position, to be honest with you. Trying to change in there a little bit. South ball left and south ball power left. It's a difficult thing when you train to face a right-handed fighter and then all of a sudden you see your, your, your opponent switch left-handed seamlessly. It's almost like it's not fair. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. That, that wasn't in the notes. What are you doing? So it's something that Martinez is going to have to deal with. Stop! Well, the fundamentals never change when it comes to dealing with the softball. And being a fighter, you should know those things. You know, your trainer should teach you. You know, right hands are very important against the softball. Left hooks are also important against softballs. And, you know, you get a lot of trainers that say, move left, move left. No, you don't have to fight for a position to get your foot outside. You just need to know the rule. When you want to get in position to punch, you need to make sure you have that foot on the outside. But you can move both, both ways. You can move to your right if you want to. Martinez and Gonzalez through one in Vegas. Rolled has been living and training out of Miami, originally from Honduras. 21 wins into his career, 14 knockouts, has a huge opportunity coming up in moments in the main event against Gabe Flores. Round number two here, scheduled for four between Gonzalez and Martinez. Excuse me. Hear me cheer is how you can have your voice heard live during our broadcast. ESPN.hearmecheer.com is where you want to go. Use the rope, use the rope, use the rope. There you go. Well, look it up, hands free, work it out. Work it out. Watch your head, watch your head. Hand up, hand up, hand up. Stop! You know, I see a lot of hands free, guys. Hands the free, same tendencies from Gonzalez. You know, when he switches southpaw, he lunges in. You can catch him when he's, you can time him when he's coming in. And also, he gets hit with right hands because he likes to pull straight back with his hands down. These are things that he needs to work on if he's going to continue to move up in the ranks. There he is, pulled back again. Come on, let him go, let him go, let him go. Hands free. Come on, guys, work it out. Stop! Let's go, baby, let's go. Work it, baby. Both of these fighters are evenly matched, and the first round was, was very, very tight, hard to judge and hard to score, and the second round this far has been very, very difficult to score as well. Very, very evenly matched. Three punches together. 
That's, that's the guys. that's the lunge I was talking about from the Let him out. Let him out. Let him out. Right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. Stop. Gonzalez may catch the eyes of the judges a little bit more because he's a little bit more flashier, does a few more things than Martinez. He'll switch southpaw, he'll switch, you know, right-handed. He, he's a little bit more flashier with what he does, so he may catch the judges' eye in some of these closer rounds. That's all she's Ravian Gonzalez, who's from Puerto Rico and is part of Jose Pedraza's team, Mark. Yeah, just because Jose Pedraza is in fighting tonight doesn't mean that he doesn't have a big stake here. Ravian Gonzalez is his protege, also trained by his stepfather, the guy he goes four minute rounds with. And Ravian says his goal is not only to surpass Pedraza, but to become, to fill the void in Puerto Rican boxing now. Right now he's only 19 years old, 2 0. Round number three here, scheduled for four. Tim, you always put this fourth, and it showed up in the last round. Don't pull straight back. Yeah, Tess, you see Gonzalez forces Martinez out with the jab, and then you see Martinez trying to pull back and jab as he's going backwards, leaving himself wide open for a right hand. You know, let me tell you another thing. A lot of coaches teach teaches fighters to jab back and up. You know, I'm against that. When you jab bagging up, you leave room for an opportunity for a right hand, just as you saw right there against Martinez. Got hit with a right hand over the top, jabbing, bagging up. Does that fall into the old trainer bucket of when in doubt, jab out? Stop. Here we go, here we go. That, that, that's a wrong, that rule is wrong. It's a false move. Exactly. <laughs> Gonzalez can serve himself right if he would just come behind the jab. He's not jabbing his way in, he's just lunging his way in. And even though Martinez is a young fighter as well, he can pick up on that and he's having some success because Gonzalez has no jab. Bernardo Mark just made the connection of trainer Luis Spada. Family member of Jose Pedraza in the corner of Fraven Gonzalez. What are they saying there? A little bit of deja vu of what we saw with Pedraza against Pedraza against Cepeda. He asked Frevian, you're tight. Are you okay? He said, I need you to let your hands go. Please, you've got to get to work. So it's really one of those situations where they didn't have answers against Cepeda, and now Previan Gonzalez needs to find answers against Jose Martinez. Yeah, you mentioned that fight against Jose Cepeda, who we have a lot of respect for. He fought for the world title, gave Jose Ramirez fits, and then had the big win against Pedraza last year. Well, Pedraza was just black. He just wasn't there. And we are looking forward to seeing Cepeda down the road here on this summer series. Ivan Baranchek, that is a very good fight. Baranchek against Zapata, scheduled for July on ESPN. Fourth and final round here between these two young fighters who come in with 2-0 and marks, Martinez and Gonzalez. I'm going to tell you right now, guys, why he's tight. One, he's young, so he's learning right now on the job. But the real reason why he's tight is the big stage he's on. You know, he's looking to impress, and that's coming in the way of his thought process. That's why he's looking tight and trying to knock out this young man. That is Gonzalez. And I'm, what I was talking about. Yes, that's what I was talking about, Gonzalez. Stop! 
But I'm okay with that, fellas, because that, that's what this learning process is all about for both of these yes. fighters at this stage in their career. They're at school. They're not going to come in here and look, look ultra polished and do everything right. If you can still win with not doing everything perfectly, then that, that, that's a big plus. So I'm not, you know, Gonzalez has to learn how to be under pressure. He's trying to press a little bit, but I think he's eked out these rounds. I think body language has been the difference because the rounds have been close. Um, so, so far, so good. I think he's fighting a good fight right now. In other words, the mistakes that Gonzalez is making, they're fixable. Come on, guys. Let him go. Hands free. Hands free. So I was trying to chase him down again. And you tie up. Right here, right here, I got it. You know, being this young in the game, you know, these guys got to learn. There's micro battles, you know, outside of the ring that you have to deal with. You got to deal with the crowd. Well, there's no crowd to deal with right now. You got to deal with te television. These guys probably wouldn't be on TV if it wasn't for COVID. So he's dealing with that. You know, you got to deal with leaving home and training. And, you know, there's a lot of different stresses that come in and can affect a fighter physically and also mentally. You know, you make that comment that these guys probably wouldn't be on TV if it wasn't for the COVID situation we're dealing with. You know, good for Biggie Rodriguez tonight. Good for Clay Collard tonight. Yes. Guys who also wouldn't have been on TV, but because we have yes. this time, these resources, and because boxing, UFC, the other, just a few other sports, but boxing right now, the sport that consistently two times a week, three times a week is back now. You have the opportunity. You have to take advantage if you're one of these four-rounders, six-round fighters, and we've seen a couple guys do that tonight. Yes. And you're right, Timmy. They wouldn't be Gonzalez has been, been doing some nice work a few seconds ago, guys. Just counter left hook, excuse me, counter straight left. And just the body language. I, I've liked his body language throughout the fight. Martinez is a good fighter, but his body language has probably cost him some close rounds. Good rounds from Gonzalez. Ladies and gentlemen, here inside MGM Grand Conference Center, after four rounds, we go to the scorecards. Judges Tim Cheatham and Eric Cheek have it 39-37. Lisa Giampa has it 40-36. All in favor by unanimous decision, Frevian Picante Gigante Gonzalez! The Little Giant, Frevian Gonzalez.